Welcome back. Hair is an important part of our lives and of course our 3D characters think the same thing. To make our 3D pictures look believable, we need to give our characters some hair or no hair or whatever, but we need to you know, be prepared to work with hair. And hair isn't quite a clothing item, but it is a follower of the Genesis figure that may or may not have deforce properties. So some hair does, other hair does not. And there's usually a lot to hair. And I wanted to give you a little starting introduction of where to look for properties inside hair. It's very similar to clothing. And I thought I'm gonna give you a demonstration here with this hair, which is called the Voss hair. This is made by Aprilish or April YSH. I believe it's Aprilish. I, I, I'm just going to say Aprilish. I hope that's okay. She makes wonderful hair and there's a lot of her products on the store and this is a great demonstration. So you usually get a little preview of what the hair looks like and a few different color types. So you get these blending options here between the hair and then there's a lot of styling and fit adjustment morphs inside these hairs. Like this is now simulating wind even without default. So this is literally a morph target that you dial in. But you need to know where to look for these things to make this really your own and to match the scene. So the easiest way to figure out is this for you or not is to have a look at does this fit my figures here. So this one's made for Genesis 8 as well as 3. That means it fits all the major Genesis generations 3, 8 and 8.1. And at the bottom here you can also see what bundles this is part of. So this came with the Victoria 8 Pro and Starter bundles if you have that Victoria 8. And then at the bottom here you can get an overview of what these adjustment morphs are. And especially on a Prillish hair you will always find these amazing options here. Let's have a look where to find those in DAS Studio. So I've applied the hair just by going over and selecting my figure here. In fact, I might just go and do this again. I might go and delete the hair, select my figure, head over to my Smart Content tab here, and then I'll go to the Hair tab. And in it, I'll see a product for every item that contains hair. That could be a product that is only about hair, but that might also be a product that is a figure that also includes hair. That might not even be just facial hair. That might be a mustache that's also classed as hair. So in my case, I'm going to use this one here, Voss Hair for Genesis 3 and 8. I'll double click on that. And in here, I get two options. I get the Genesis 8 option and the Genesis 3 option. So I'll go and double click the one that's right for my figure, namely this one. And then the hair pops right into place. If I wanted to make a material change on this, if I wanted to change the hair color, then I usually find that under materials up here. And materials is usually grouped into just hair or nothing and eye ray. And that means those are the two types of material presets that we can load on this. These ones here, RSL, that's for the 3D Light engine. This is kind of nice that these little thumbnails say that as well. Not, not every vendor does this, but this is very helpful. So RSL means 3D Light, and that's also reflected in the thumbnail here. And then eye ray is MDL, and that also says eye ray in the thumbnail here. So for these to work, I need to go and select my hair. I can either go and right click on the hair and then just go and select Voss hair from here, or I can go and do that in my scene tab as we discussed before. And then I can pick any of these fantastic color combinations here. So there's a lot of them here. There's often other options that have, means how shiny the hair is and how translucent and all that. I'm just going to go and use this option here, the red and black and double click that and that applies it. And then we have hair color. There. So that's the material preset. That's the actual color of the hair. But the next thing is the adjustment options in the hair. So this is often just a default position that looks very good. And it'll also try to follow the Genesis figure. But sometimes if you have exotic head shapes, you can go and adjust that. And on top of that, you might also want to go and have some shaping morphs. So like if she were to take a walk in the wind, then there's this category here, shaping that lets you use one click options to shape that into roughly what the thumbnail sees. So this one here, uh, pose number three, I'll double click that still with the hair selected and I'll see that my hair now goes and wafts in the wind, which is kind of nice. Or I can make it look slightly different like so, or like so. So the one click options, they're nice, a bit like one click poses. They kind of get you started and you can see is this kind of roughly where you want to be with your hair. That's a neat start to just see what the hair has to offer because sometimes you see hair and you think, wow, that looks nothing like the default pose now. And it's not so much about wind, but it's also about conveying motion inside the character or just, you know, making the picture look great that you're trying to build.
I want to go back to the first one here. That's basically the default styling of the hair. And I'll show you where this is in slider. So all these things are morph targets, much like we have clothing adjustment morphs. We have those in hair as well. And they're in the same position as well. So there's nothing really new to remember. It's on the parameters tab with my hair selected. There's this category, which is actor. And under actor, we usually have these two things. We have fit and adjust, and then we have the styling and move morphs here. And in this case, they're divided into two sections here, pose controls and shapes. So fit and adjust, this is something that lets you tweak the hair much like it would let you tweak clothing in which in case your skull is poking through the hair or the crown isn't quite on top of the head or whatnot, this is how what you can adjust there. So like, you know, adjust the cheek left in case your hair kind of pokes through, then you can adjust something like that. So these are individual strands that go and move and watch these in various viewports as well, including IRA, your final render. Crown size, this you know, makes this a little bit bigger. So this is for adjusting, making fine tunes in case you have exotic character shapes. I like the hairline here, how much that recedes. If you do this, you can just about see up here, this is now the hair prop intersecting with the figure. So kind of going 2D and you don't want to have that. So in this case, I don't think I needed to do any adjustments, but you know, in case you needed to do that, this is where you'd make that happen under the adjust morphs, ear width and stuff. So you can do all kinds of things here. Then the other one here, the styling and move tab, that is to convey motions. And this is what these one click options are built with that I've just shown you. If I go to pose controls, I can move the hair where I'd like it to go. Like if I look from the side and say all back, would do this. So that means all the hair is going to move back. And so if she's walking into the wind, this is what she would look like. Sometimes you can also adjust these things the other way. So that would make the hair go forward. That's kind of the negative of the morph that may or may not work, but sometimes it's quite nice if she gets the wind from the back and this is what it would look like. Alt left click on the slider to move that back into the default position. Then you have all forward. That's another morph. So that'll do this. If she is in fact getting the wind from the back, there's all going to the left. There's also all going to the right. You see the concept is it's really nice. And it's just like with the clothing adjustment morphs, I really suggest, look at that spread and you can literally go and build something. This is not what the hair looked like at all, but this is all in the hair. So you gotta really appreciate the amount of work that's gone into making this happen. And also the amount of convenience that you have to give one hair prop seven different distinct looks. So that's kind of nice as well side ends forward so this is just the end bits here so yes take some time and if you have a new hair prop go through it and see what it has to offer because only then will you be able to use it to its full potential those are just the pose controls. So then we have the shapes and they are also morph targets and you can use all these in combination so uh, you can use a little bit of this a little bit of that so if we go back to back back that'll do this so it's just a portion of the hair that goes back there's also back forward and so forth. So you really have to play around with this and just see what does what back spread. So if you don't want everything to spread. And the nice thing about this is that depending on if you have poses in which she has her head kind of to the side, this is where really where that comes in handy, where you all of a sudden see that if you had the head that's kind of bent and as a result, the hair intersects with shoulders, you can use these sliders to get that out. That's kind of nice. So length on the left, up and down, same on the right. If one side needs to be a little bit shorter, you can make that happen. Right side going to the right. It is just so cool. Then there's also left side going to the right or left side going to the left. Sliders are very descriptive and very self-explanatory. Not every hair will have that, but the good hairs will. And it is a good idea to just look through how this works. If your hair has defaults and you can simulate it, just like we've talked about in the section about clothing, it works just the same for standing poses. You usually don't have to get the timeline involved. It is literally just a one part process there. Um, there's something I haven't quite talked about in the previous defaults section. If you had two items with defaults and you don't want to simulate them at the same time, you can just make one invisible, then simulate one make the other one invisible, then simulate the other. That is possible. You can also freeze the simulation when you're done with that. There's a section on the parameters tab that will have a freeze button in the simulation section. So once you're done simulating, you can click that and then that particular item that you've selected and frozen will not participate in the next default simulation for perhaps a different item. Just thought I'd let you know that. 
that's really all there is to know about hair. It's much like clothing. It's very similar, just something to get acquainted with. And my tip really is to have a look at the hair props that you have and go through the parameters section, go through the actor section, have a look at fit adjustment and the styles, have a look at the one clicks and just play around with it and see what those hair props have to offer. In the next episode, we're going to have a look at accessories and how we can fit them to our characters. Stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.